and it doesn't really understand why it just can't return everything else. It, it, it's that missing component, that linchpin of uh, info, uh, grouping it together. Hell yeah. Where did you build that in, by the way? Uh, so I actually messed around with uh, just a Rails router. So I routed it through React. And so instead of having to create two um, different files, I was able just to write it all in one Rails file and then do uh, React DOM. There's one other word. Um, but basically in Rails and then just have like, yeah. Oh yeah, fully embedded. Very cool. Rock on. Well, great job, Carlos. Up next, if I haven't lost my list, we got Jay and Sydney. Give it up for Jay and Sydney. So, have you ever been in a situation where you needed to learn a whole lot of information, you just didn't have a whole lot of time to do that, and you know, you go down rabbit holes of learning things and all of a sudden, all your time's gone away? If you're in the Zoom call, you probably have. So, what's the solution for those kind of problems? Well, you can either pull out your phone, put a timer on, or you can go to, you know, Google, you can type in timer, you can go to some website, there's a thousand of them, and put on a timer, and then go back to whatever you were doing, and go back to the timer whenever you need to check it in the other tab. So, we've come up with a solution called the Goldfish Timer that fixes these problems. The Goldfish Timer is a Google Chrome extension. It lives right up in the right side of your browser, and it allows you to set a timer um, that will run inside of Chrome. So we can go ahead and set whatever time we want. We can press start. We can let that start running. And it's going to have a timer so that you can focus on learning the things you need mm -hmm. to know. You can even click out of it so you don't have it in the, in the way. And you can learn whatever you need to know. You need to do something else maybe. So you go to another tab. You need to learn something. You need to go to GitHub. Who knows? Um, and, you know, we got a lot of tabs open. So we don't want to be annoyed by all those other things so we can even pull the tab we're in out and make it its own window um you know completely separate be working on something completely different than we were when we set the timer but that extension's still running in the corner the whole time so we can click back on that and it's still going to have the running time um so if we need to get a checkup on the time we can always do that but we never need to we can close out of it um, and it's still running in that background and it will alert us when it's finished without being on that page we started on. We can even close all of our tabs. We can close, we can minimize Chrome. We can go into a completely different app. And when that timer finishes, it'll let us know. You know, we can be in Slack just uh, checking out what's going on in the announce page or something. And hopefully we timed this right. <laughs> um, Hmm. Maybe we want to check the timer again. <laughs> oh, and our timer goes off when our time when the minute finishes. There we go. That wasn't a missed time at all. <laughs> That's our app, the Goldfish Timer, uh, and it will be uh, available for download on the Google Web Store soon. It's pending review. Oh yeah, give it up for Jane Sydney. Questions for Jane Sydney. Why did you all choose a goldfish? Uh, the joke with that is ha having the attention span of a goldfish means that you can't keep track of time. So, goldfish timer. Did y'all rehearse how long Jay would need to talk to hit that time? Uh, kind yeah. of. One time. <laughs> yeah. So we were sort of winging it. We had it on two minutes. It didn't work on two minutes. So we set it at one and we were off by about six, seven seconds. Yeah. How do you create an extension? 
it's surprisingly easy. Um, there's actually a Chrome, uh, Google Chrome document that just walks through the steps. I don't know how to explain it further than that. You just yeah, have three I'm, different. It's, it's all JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. It's just that you have three different um, um, pages that all have their own uh, dev tools. They all uh, you know, have their own HTML. Um, and you just have to make those three talk to each other. And it's just like running a small HTML in the corner, except that it doesn't exist when you're not clicking on it. So then you have to have an invisible one also that does exist. But yeah, we can talk about it later. Hell yeah, great job, y'all. All right, up next we got Haley. Give it up for Haley. All right. Um, so I created a remake of Flappy Bird using JavaScript. So um, just like a basic home page. Uh, there's a start game button, a score, and a high score. We click start game. We can tap the space bar and play. And then as you pass a pipe, you get 10 points. And if you hit a pipe, your game ends. And then a little, it's called a toast, like a little alert pops up and says, nice try, your score was 20. And if you hit the close button, it's gonna restart the game. So let's hit close. And then you can see that the high score updated. So now let's play again. Oh, but I almost dropped there. Um, and it's my, the high score updates as you are beating it. So let's get past 20. So 30 and then the game ends. And that is my app. Oh yeah, good job, Haley. All right, questions for Haley. Having missed the Flappy Bird trend when it came around, uh, are the levels like preset? Do those pipes, are they always in the same positions or do they like procedurally generate? Um, I can't answer how the original game had it, but um, I created a, an array of like seven heights and then used a random generator feature. Um, and then the top height was just, you know, we wanted a 200 pixel space in between. So there's only about seven heights in mine. How's making a game different like in the other project? Um, it's actually a lot of fun. Um, I originally followed like this tutorial and then the tutorial was setting up a React app and creating a canvas and that was like as far as it got me. So it was a lot of like looking at like what other people had done, but I didn't really find anything in React. I found a lot of React Native. Um, it was like a lot of math, but it was also kind of simpler than I thought and really fun. I would like definitely recommend making a game. Did you uh, investigate doing anything like, like once you get up to a certain score, maybe like speeds up or anything like that? I didn't get there. <laughs> My Friday morning feature was adding the pipes on top, um, which I didn't show, but if you, you can go through those pipes and the game doesn't end. So I just need to do a little bit of math. Um, so it's kind of copy and pasting, but I need to add some math for the top pipes to do collision. The next step was going to be a login so you can save your high score. Oh, that's awesome. Great job. Hell yeah, very cool. Go Haley. All right, up next we got Terrell and Luis. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> All right, so our, um, our website is called Catch em All. It's, uh, if you couldn't tell, um, about Pokemon. And um, we have printed out a list of the first 100 Pokemon that came out. And um, yeah, you can, um, they're all kind of randomized. So we added a search but button and you can kind of, you don't, if you're not sure about the name, you can just type in char and then uh, you'll get a printout of, of uh, whatever cards have um, the characters that you uh, entered. 
Um, and we also have a sign in feature. So um, we can go ahead and create a user. Um, so to create a user, um, I'll use Ahmed. Uh, it's email. Email.com and his password is one, two, three. So now we have signed in. Um, and from here, we can also sign out. Oops, let me get rid of this now. And you also get a nice little Ash Ketchum uh, quote for good inspiration. So you can sign out and then we can use Ahmed to sign back in. Um, and his password is one, two, three, four. Oh, the password was not correct. So let me go ahead and try that again. I think it was one, two, three. Boom, now we're in. So from here, you can go through like the Pokemon that you've already caught. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the end of our app. Hell yeah, give it up for Troll and Luis. Good job, y'all. Word, questions for Troll and Luis. So, Pokemon card API, I'm guessing, or hand seated? Yes. Okay, nice. Um, yeah, Pokemon API. So the API that we had, had like all of the, um, like every Pokemon card ever made. So we had to like narrow it down just to the base. And even from the base, we have so many Pokemon cards. So um, that was kind of fun trying to dig through that. And it came in a gem. It wasn't like a website. So it was like really different to kind of pick up on that first. What was the build out like for that create new user window? I really like that. Um, uh, um, that you basically just like, um, um, sorry, I honestly forgot how I did it. <laughs> um, it was basically, I used like a, yeah, I don't even remember. It was kind of like a window that wasn't there, but then like once um, you clicked on it, the window like appeared. Um, yeah, it's a window, but it, I displayed it to hidden. And then once I added an, an event list in there, and once you click on it, it changes it to, to a flex, so it pops up. Oh, so it was like a card and you had like the CSS hiding it, and then when you click yeah. that, yeah. Nice. I think Ahmed froze. I think Ahmed froze also. Christine, take the reins. Everyone disappeared. Uh, sorry if it's loud here, but uh, yeah, give it up for Terrell and Luis. Christine is the captain now. <laughs> Sam Evans is next. Okay, Sam, is up next. Sam Evans. Go, Sam. <laughs> Get it. Hey, everyone. Uh, I had some big issues early in the week, so this one was a bit of an adventure for me. Um, I set out to create a adult like rec sports website, um, kind of like Play My High or Sports Monster. If you guys have done anything like that. Uh, their websites are awful, I think, so I wanted to make something better. Um, so that brings us to Has Been Sports uh, in Denver. Uh, if you scroll down, got a little info on who we are, some pretty pictures, uh, some meaningless paragraphs, a little review that I took directly from Prey Mile High website. Um, oh, it looks like I'm already logged in. Whoops. Takes you to your athlete page. The idea was that you have a little like buttons here. You could click and like show your different teams. Um, didn't fully get to that. Like, so the idea was to like show your team here, have the schedule render on the side. These are like flex boxes. Uh, you can log out. Got a login page. I'll log back in. And that's all I got so far. A bit of an adventure in the back end and then CSS for me.
Oh, everybody give it up for Sam. Crushing it. All right, next up, we got Darcy Jen. Oh, questions. Oh, questions. We got people questions. People want to know. The people want to know. Questions. We got questions for Sam. What was that back end? Did you do Node? Uh, well, that was part of the problem. I started with Node, um, but this was the most complicated back end I've tried to build, and I've struggled. There are 14 models like players and teams and seasons and all kinds of shit. And uh, I got out of hand really fast and then I had some issues with my laptop. So I actually like went back to rails and was able to build it in like an hour and a half, <laughs> which is kind of outrageous. Um, but yeah, the back end works really nicely. I guess I could show you guys a bunch of code if you want to see that. Sam, did you use a, a CSS library or anything? I used React Strap on this one, um, and then I did. I added a bunch of like custom components and custom hooks to handle like the rendering and stuff. What is the the mile high club thing that you were talking about? Like I saw a soccer field. That's that's what I'm interested about right now. Is it like a club that people just sign up to play and stuff? Oh, uh, play, play Mile High is just like a local like rec sports league. Um, it's kind of terrible, which was why I wanted to do this. <laughs> they do all kinds of stuff, though. They've got like esports and kickball and uh, all kinds of shit. Cornhole, soccer. Cool, cool. All righty, everybody give it up for Sam. All right, next up we got Darcy, Jen, and Matt. Everybody give it up for them. Hey Darcy, I struggle to track how much cheese my mice eat. How do you track how much cheese your mice eat? Oh boy, do I have an app for you. I use mice like cheese to track all my mice's daily cheese intake. Let me show you. All right, here's my mouse Yogati. Let me show you how it works. Go to your log your cheese, and whoops, I forgot to insert Yo Gotti's cheese intake. Let's give her 30. And oh wait, I forgot. I gave birth to little baby Gucci last night. I'm a terrible mother. He had six cheeses for lunch, so let's insert those and check it out on our leaderboard to see who ate the most cheese today. And there you have it. That's how I track my little baby's cheese. Thank you. All righty, does anybody have any questions? Oh wait, we're not done, John. You're jumping the gun. Um, oh. Matthew is gonna show you, um, we had a way different idea. Um, we were gonna use a trivia API that I also tried to use in Hackathon and failed. Um, and uh, we were gonna try and do a computer mouse game, but it just turned into a mouse cheese tracker. And Matthew can show how that worked. Okay, hey everyone. Um, my portion of the presentation is like the blooper reel. So <laughs> this is what, uh, this is what uh, DJ was talking about. So um, we made a, this was, it was originally uh, the app, uh, quiz app and it was going to be about um, the computer cheese uh, thing. So anyway, uh, here we go. Um, good luck, trivia game. Um, and we only got this far, uh, we were going to put some, do a stretch thing and do a little mod three stuff uh, with some uh, event listeners on that. And we didn't, uh, that's kind of where things stalled out. Uh, so, but anyway, that is on um, that. And then, yeah, we got the same leaderboard again. So that is it. All righty, all right, I had to wait for the, for the go ahead. Does anybody have any questions for either Matt, Darcy, or Jen? 
So semi-serious question, did you have a go-to source for all those pictures of mice climbing on things? And then slightly more serious question, how did you come up with this idea? Which idea? <laughs> yeah, which part of it? <laughs> the, whole, the, whole, the whole app. I think Ben said it correctly that I don't think anyone has ever built something like this before. <laughs> Um, well, the, the photos are from, from Unsplash. Um, as for the idea, we were going to do a trivia game and decided to focus on um, uh, the computer category. And I was trying to think of just a witty way to bring cute animals into it. And that's where computer, computer mouse came from. Um, and it just devolved from there. Devolved is a good word. All righty, does anybody have any more questions? Okay, everybody give it up for Darcy, Matt, and Jen. And next up, we have, pulling up the list in the background, because I am the worst host that's ever existed in Flatiron history. That's not true. Thank you, I needed that. Where did the list go? Hang on a second. Why did I completely lose the list? I think it's Ben Rowe. Okay, I'm just gonna go with Ben Rowe. <laughs> and if he comes up later, we'll figure it out. Okay, well that's good, because my commit just finished uh, uploading. Did that on um, Yeah, it was just for Kyle. Uh, let's see, how many is... There's this weird thing going on where the bottom half of my browser no longer exists. Oh, and that's good, it just rearranged. Oh well. Let's see here, so I also did a survey app and it came to my mind uh, last week when Brian was saying uh, that his wedding is a year away, like to the date. So I was thinking to myself, you know, what does Brian love more than anything? What can I give him for a wedding present? So his favorite thing is surveys. Uh, so here we go. You can look at your old surveys. Oh, that page is still gross. Um, so there you go. You can fill these puppies out. Uh, da -da. Let's see here. That's gonna happen soon. Let's see, I have two. Yeah, and so that, you know, that's saved, that's in there. I did not get to the point where I could graph all the results, uh, but we can make one, we can make another survey. So let's see here. Friday, no, I already have that one. There we go. Um, Uh, the Lakers played in there. Um, do to do, do and uh, oh, I got. And we can bundle add your survey. And there you go. So I didn't set up the auth, and you have to like change the. You have to like go out and go back in to access the survey that you just made yourself. But uh, there's room to grow. That's what I got. All righty, questions. Everybody give it up for Ben. Next up we have Kelsey and Elliot. Everybody give it up for Kelsey and Elliot.
sorry, helped to unmute. Um, we made a recall app where it shows every single food recall since 2013. And um, I think we have every recall, food recall um, in the database. We can go ahead and make a new user here. It's been since our first time in and click submit. And then once you are in the system, you can go in and see your name that was created and see past users that have been in the system. And then as well as viewing on um, their save recalls. And these are all like FDA ID numbers that we created. Um, and to view almost every record, we had so many, there's about 20,000. So we filtered it down by state. And then once you get into the state, here's kind of like every company that has a recall um, in the state of Colorado. And there's some familiar names like Boulder Brands. And so you can see all the recalls that have been issued by this company since uh, 2013. And clicking on it more kind of shows basically everything that's in the FDA system about them. Now we're gonna go ahead and check out um, another company in Colorado that has had some recalls issued. All right, so we have some apples that have been recalled. You can go ahead and look at that recall page and here it displays pretty much all the relevant information you'd wanna know. Um, is there apples? They have potential for listeria and it also says the status, this one's terminated. At the bottom, we also have the ability to save that recall. Uh, you just enter in your user ID and the recall ID, and then you can submit. That redirects you to the home page. Uh, you can go into your username, and then at the very bottom there, uh, you can go ahead and check up on it later if you need to. And then we can navigate back on over to the home page and scroll down in addition to searching by state we have a global search so you can search any food that you want to see if there's any recalls and those will populate in the scroll box and from there you can also click uh, the link and navigate to the recall page that way and that's pretty much all the functionality on our app thanks Great job. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, was it difficult working with that much data? Like, how is the API? We, um, so we didn't like use REST client for it. We were able to get just like a massive JSON file, which we were able to store in our library on the back end. And so that made, and then we kind of made custom routes through Rails to kind of get in and, and go to the different sections that we wanted to access. I mean, it was basically, it was just like overwhelming to start just working with that much data. But yeah, once you kind of filter it down by state and then by company, it becomes a smaller bite-sized piece. Yeah, you can tell it takes like a second on some of the pages for the information to populate, but it really doesn't take that long. Um, but seeding the database uh, yourself on the back end uh, could definitely take a little longer. What was y'all's biggest challenge? on this project? It's a good question. Um, just making it all fit together probably just since it's our first time doing kind of a full stack thing. Um, just the initial kind of tying the JavaScript in with the back end was challenging a couple of days, but we were able to get through it. Yeah, it was, um, it was interesting trying to get the, the search filter to work. Um, just with what we've been taught so far, accounting for like apostrophes and other special characters uh, was something we didn't like totally anticipate at first. Um, but it was it was really fun to work through actually. Nicely done. More questions? All righty. Next up, we have Michael Navoy. Everybody, give it up for them, by the way. Obviously, too. <laughs> Uh, hey everybody. Um, so I made like a uh, community-based uh, ski gear exchange website. 
Um, so hold on, let me clear this real quick. What's going on? Is it frozen? Okay. Anyway, so yeah, you can browse listings. Um, and then if you want, you can create a new listing. So And then our listing will render. We can go here and add it to cart. Looks like I'm already signed in. So if you weren't, it would um, make you sign in first. Go to a checkout, put in the address, pay with PayPal, and then you can place the order, which doesn't really do anything. But uh, that's that. Awesome. Does anybody have any questions for Michael? How much fun did you have seeding your uh, listings? Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. You have to like Google search and like find images that work. And yeah, that was like all morning. And a lot of it was like dummy data. Like, uh, oh wait, you can't see it. But one says it's a jacket and it's a pair of skis. And uh, it just wasn't good. Not a lot of fun. I saw that. I saw some skis labeled as a snowboard. I, I didn't make a joke in the chat to not blow up your spot, but to blow up your spot, does the credit card thing work? Yeah. Uh, no, it doesn't. It just, they, uh, whenever you get to your place order screen, it just um, tells you that you're paying with credit card, but there's no in, like forms to put in the info or anything like that. Still looks slick though. Thanks. All righty. Everybody give it up for Michael. So next up we have Matt Long. Everybody give it up for Matt Long. Lost my mute unmute button there ref because I shared first. All right, uh, can I get this out of here? <clears throat> All right, so uh, the concept for this app is the reality with uh, COVID and then just the way that people are flooding into our national parks. Um, there's uh, a growing movement to implement uh, reservation systems uh, in national parks with parks, just generally speaking. So my app's not done, but I have some foundation here. You have a landing screen here, a welcome. Uh, when you scroll down, you have a resources section. Um, this isn't functional at the moment, but there's room for adding some links or some API connections here. Uh, there's a feature trail section here. Um, so I am utilizing the, I think it's the public hiking, uh, hiking trails API, I'm trying to remember what it's called. Um, so the, the star ratings pulling from there, um, when you hover over the cards, they, you know, show that you're interacting with them. So functionality pretty much stops there. Um, you've got a trails page where um, this spot here um, needs to render more of those cards and it should show all the trails. I have 20 trails right now that I'm grabbing from Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, and then the individual trails need an individual page. So right now you've got a little error message. Um, but what I, I'm hoping for here um, is, you know, the connectivity to go in and actually put a reservation in so you can put something on the calendar and know that you can go um, on a certain day at a certain time. The, the full trails page, I'm hoping to have like some search filter so you can pull up, you know, trails by distance or by a difficulty and stuff like that. Um, it is responsive. Um, so, you know, if you, you are on a smaller screen, you've got a hamburger menu um, and this will still look good. So, uh, that's pretty much it for now. Um, I definitely picked up some new stuff in React, which took a lot of time. And this time around, I went the custom CSS route instead of using any libraries, which was um, a nice little chunk as well. Um, so yeah, I think that is it for this tour. V1. Good job. Does anybody have any questions for Matt? 
Yeah. How is uh, getting the responsiveness together? How, how much like effort does that take? Not a ton. I mean, once you learn more about responsiveness, it's, it's something that you can bake in from the start. Um, and that's not too difficult. Um, now, don't look at my CSS file in general unless you want to be fully overwhelmed. <laughs> uh, but the responsiveness part of it is not that hard. <laughs> Awesome. Everybody give it up for Matt. And next up we have Brad and Victor. Okay, so we created an app that shows the top 10 most abundant elements on earth. Um, so this is the the initial web page if you want to go check out a specific element you go to the next one and here you can check the actual molecule move it around and it also provides you with the symbol its abundance percentage on earth and also its atomic mass if we go to another one then it will display the same thing with this 3d model that you can play around with and yeah, that's about it. All right, does anybody have any questions for Victor and Brad? What did you use to display those models? So I spent almost an entire day trying to figure it out, trying to figure it out with a, with a, JS or 3JS, but we ended up finding a program that does the, like if you go, it's called mallview.org, where you just search the, the element that you wanna display or that you wanna see it in 3D, and then they give you the opportunity to copy an embedded link, and that's what I did. This is an, it's an iframe with the embedded link of the mallview.org webpage. Awesome, any more that, questions? Oh. Is, is that how you did the, the Earth model on the homepage too? Something like no, that? No, 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 that's, that's just a GIF, right? A, a, a background image. Uh, oh, okay, because that's, that's not interactive, yeah. okay. So it's a background on a, a background image, yeah. What do you know about elements? <laughs> uh, not not much. We just wanted. Uh, we originally had like a periodic table API, but like embedding that many molecules was like insanely difficult. So, or not insanely difficult. It was just uh, tedious and time consuming. So we just did you know ten most abundant. But oh yeah. And everybody, give it up for Brad and Victor. Um, next up, we have Brooke. See what you got, Brooke. All right. How's it going, everybody? So let's share the screen. So for this week, I decided to do a portfolio page. Uh, I wanted to be uh, ahead of the game because next week is nothing but uh, chaos. So uh, this was my shortcut. So I used uh, the technology that I used was uh, S Smooth Scroll, Bootstrap, and React with JX and all that good stuff. So Ahmed, as you know, this is my photo shoot from yesterday, if you wanted to know. Um, so got all these compartments. There's not much. It's just kind of straightforward. And it says recent, which is not true. These are my old projects. Um, so if you kind of click into it, this was the project that I did with Bob a while ago. Um, and this was my, from MSU, I did for this is Python data visualization class that I end up doing using Python with one partner. And also this was, uh, another one that I did, 
This is Python based, it's called Bokeh. The library is used by Bokeh. And this is how much food that we were importing in the US between 1999 to now. Obviously, the most we import is fish, some liquor, some meat. Um, and this is my technical side. And this is that. And to, to see the smooth scroll, you see how smoothly it goes up and down, which is kind of cool. And you get to see me more. So that's what I have for you guys. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Brooke? All righty, everybody give it up. Uh, oh, wait. I did, have, I did have a question. I mean, give it yeah. up anyway. How did, that, uh, how did that picture Zoom work? So I used a, uh, actually, let me share my screen one more time. Uh, just uh, hovering. And so when you, you have your first uh, scale right here, and then when you hover over it, uh, you have to have your hover, oh, it's in a different one. Project, yeah, there it is. Oh my goodness, I can't see it. So you, when you hover over it, you have to, there you go. Change it up to, to a different scale. Oh, that's cool. And so just you get to look at me more. There you go. All right, now everyone give it up for Brooke. <laughs> And next we have uh, Sanjeev and Dan. Everybody give it up for Sanjeev and Dan. All right. So we did a movie app. So this is our app called Cinemagic. It's basically a movie database where users can store their favorite films and then check out other movies as well. So first thing you're going to want to do is register by creating a new username and a password. And that'll create and then store it. Once it's created, you can go ahead and log in with that username and password. Once everything or once you're logged in, it'll take you to your favorites page. and get this working. Also, if you don't put in the right password, you can't move on. Another one. There we go. So this is going to be your favorite movie page. Um, you can go ahead and scroll through our database and select any movie that you like, and it'll automatically get added. So we'll go ahead and add a movie here. And I don't believe we put a limit on the number of movies that you can add. So if you like every movie, feel free to add it. Um, another thing is if you hover over a movie and select it, It'll go to the movies page, where it'll give you a brief outline of the plot, when it was released, and then also the database provided us with a star rating, um, so you can see what other people are thinking of it. Another feature that we have is just a search by name. So if you go ahead in there and type in whatever movie you'd like, it'll go ahead and bring that up as well down below. So we'll do Lord of the Rings. You got to give it a minute because I think we have like 3,000 films, so it takes a little bit of time. So once again, you can select any of these and it'll bring you to the individual movie page. And then finally, if you're just looking to maybe browse a bunch of movies, you can go to the movie gallery, which will display every movie um, in our database and you can find something new to watch. So we'll go ahead and bring that up here in a moment. There you go. 
And that's going to be our app. Nicely done. Does anybody have any questions for Dan or Sanjeev? So when you uh, when you search a movie, does it like scroll to wherever it is on this thing, or does it like filter everything else out? I believe it filters everything else out. Gotcha. Cool. All righty, everybody, give it up for Dan and Sanjeev. Next up, we have Tony. Everybody give it up for Tony. Hi, everyone. Um, share my screen here. Uh, okay. Um, so this project isn't really fully done. Um, it's a project I kind of resurrected a couple of weeks ago, and then I try to um, implement React with it. And so it's just a media page where you can kind of browse through any type of news, videos, or images. And the reason why I made this is I watch a lot of YouTube videos, and there's times where I kind of want to save myself a couple seconds to be able to just like be inclusive of just being able to render images or news without having to exit out of that one site. So like YouTube, you can only watch videos. So um, it's just like the main homepage. Um, it renders the most current up-to-date um, training news articles, and these are all functional uh, links you can go to. Um, these are all live playable uh, videos, and these are just kind of like a slideshow of like news deck for today. And um, this is a search component. So like depending on what you want to search for, news, videos, or images, um, if I want to look for Apple, and search up Apple News here, just like Google does. And then I can also just click on each article link and read more about it. Um, for videos, uh, this is linked directly with um, YouTube, so I can just look up food. And this will just um, list out food, and it kind of renders a little slowly at the moment, but well, like, as you can see. But um, I just wanted something where it was a little convenient for me to just have it all in one place in the images. I mean, like tacos. And then it's going to just render out all the taco images. So it's a fun little app I made here, but I still have to finish up my back for this. So I got a long ways to go. But yeah, that's uh, that's my app. Nice job. Does anybody have any questions for Tony? Did you use a CSS library? Um, yeah, I just uh, I just kind of went ahead and used Bootstrap on mine. This one. <laughs> All right, great job, Tony. Next up, we have TJ and Brian. Everybody give it up for TJ and Brian. All right, so uh, are you not a pet owner and are jealous of all your pet owner friends, but you don't think that you have the time and responsibility to be a pet owner? Well, here's your solution. I've got Pet Renter. And I'll log in as Brian and Brian can take it away. Yeah, so since I'm a current user, we'll go ahead and just log in, selecting that. I see I, in the past I rented Fluffy here. He's a pretty cool cat, but I'm looking for a new new pet for the weekend. So let's go ahead and, uh, you know what? That tiger's looking pretty awesome. I think I'm gonna take stripes. So $500 a day, sounds great. Let's just do the weekend. So we'll do uh, today to Sunday. Yeah, and go ahead and rent him. There you go. Now he's my buddy for the weekend, so. And uh, I'm gonna also go ahead and log in, or actually I'll make a new login. This is Thomas, create new user. Don't have any pets in my, uh, in my history, so I'll go ahead and add a new one. And as you can see, we've got a pretty big array of pets. We've got cats, we've got dogs, we've got birds, looking at you there, Ben. Uh, we've even got some rabbits. 
So look at that. Look at all these rabbits that we've got. So, um, but let's filter them down. Let's just do birds for this one. I've never had a bird before. So uh, yeah, I like an animal that I can talk to. So let's go with Robert and uh, I'll go with him for the weekend. I'll give him back on Monday. I think me and Robert are gonna have a good time. And there's Robert and uh, all these links work too for GitHub and authors and contact. And uh, that's our app. We get, everybody give it up for TJ and Brian. Do you guys have any questions for them? Was it hard to implement the calendar and like making them unavailable? Or is that a feature that you have? Uh, so the calendar itself was, was pretty difficult to get in there. Uh, we don't have it where like if somebody else has already rented the animal, you can't also. That would be a, an extension if we were to take this further. It's a little tricky too, because in our rental model, we just have like the user ID, the pet ID, and then like the number of days. So we actually had to do like an event listener with this where like every time the, the date changes, it um, tries to calculate the days based on the dates. Um, so that took some working, but we eventually got it. This, uh, this looks slick. Did you guys use like a library or anything? Uh, no, it's like 200 lines of CSS per page. <laughs> Yeah, that checks out. <laughs> if you go on GitHub, you know how GitHub like breaks down your uh, like the languages used. It's like fifty percent CSS. <laughs> so next time a library for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All righty, everybody, give it up for Brian and TJ. So next up we have Naya. Everybody, give it up for Naya. Hey, okay, let me share my screen. Okay, so this is Rouge, a web app to allow users to pick out makeup products based on the look they're going for, daytime or nighttime. And so we start off with just like some products. And so I have, you know, shit to do in the afternoon tomorrow. So let me go for daytime looks. And so I'm gonna add this to my look and um, this bronzer and call it a day. And then I actually have, you know, girls night after that. So I'm gonna go for nighttime. And as you can see, some products stay because like, for example, this product, it'll have many different colors, some being day light color, some being night, which you can see um, more on the um, page of the product. But I'll go for this and here. And um, yeah, I'm a huge eyeliner fan. So I'm going to go and check out this product, see their colors, and buy that for myself. And so now that that's bought, I'm going to, you know, quit that. Um, but yeah, you can just like play around, see what different products lie within this world. So no, thank you. Anybody have any questions for Naya? Where'd all those products come from? They came from a makeup API I found that was like ridiculously detailed. Like it was insane, like seeding it. Cause like, um, I wanted like only specific attributes, um, like only specific keys. And so I had to like go through the entire thing and like pick out the ones I like actually wanted and everything. But no, it was a really cool API with like actual like current products. And they came with those links too, to like the actual product. Yeah, pages? everything Holy is from the the images, the description, the links, every, there's even things I didn't add, like um, the color, like arrays and like things like that. There's, it was a ridiculous API and very easy to use. How do you determine if something is day or night? That was with the um, table with you on it. <laughs> that was with taking out um, the hex values. So, like the colors part of the API was actually like an array of a bunch of different colors. And so I had to do some manipulation to only get the hex value part of that array and then um, change it so that the like my program would recognize it as light or dark um really with the trickiest thing being like reds because some people recognize it as light some people recognize it as dark um and then um being able to actually like select and everything was based on like changing like state and things like that all 
All righty, everybody give it up for Naya. That was awesome. Next up, we got Shelly and Kyle. Everybody give them a hand. All right, um, we have, I think Kyle's gonna share his screen. Um, so we decided to make an app based on our mutual love for the outdoors and always forgetting that one key piece of gear when you're going on an excursion. Um, so it's really good to have a pack list. I'll let Kyle run through it. Cool. Um, so I'm just gonna run through it two times. Once as an existing user and then once as a new user. So you're able to log in here. Um, and here we've got a list of a bunch of activities for you. Um, but first we're actually gonna bring you to your profile page. Um, so these are packs that we already have saved. Um, so you've been here before, you got a packing list for the gunks. Uh, there's a nice photo up here. Actually, when you reload in, uh, it just gives you kind of like a random inspirational thing up there. And then down here, you can see the list of things that we recommend. Um, all these cards kind of pop up. Every item on here links you to a web page that has like the top whatever of 2020 for that thing. Um, and then you've also got the option to remove them. So, okay, you don't think you need sunscreen. Uh, so the sunscreen's gone now. Um, then you're able to go back, see your profile page. Um, we have it so you can update your password here just in case you're wanting to. Um, you can also go back and start a new trip, um, but I'll go ahead and sign out and show you guys a new user. I see Ben at the top of my list pretty much every time. So we'll make Ben a new, new user here. So he's coming in, it's his first time. We've got all these activities. Ben's probably gonna go rock climbing. So then when you get in here, uh, it gives you a little description. Um, and this is our suggested list of things you should bring. Um, ben doesn't think he needs water. So he's actually gonna take that off of his list. Um, and we'll say that Ben is going to Clear Creek. So then you add that in, it'll take you to your, um, profile page here. You can check that out once again if you want to. And then let's say he's already done his Clear Creek, Clear Creek trip. Um, so then he just removes his pack and it's all gone. Yep, so that is our app. Nicely done. Does anybody have any questions for Kyle or Shelly? Yeah, so on the, um, on the options, the background, how do you get that like oblique shape? The oblique shape? Um, yeah. It's the border like this. Yeah. It's just playing with the border radius. Um, it's like a percentage that you can add to it. So as you play with that, it kind of changes the shape to it. And then when you hover over it, it just changes it back to normal. That's so sick. Do you see all your own data? Shelly seeded like 95% of it, and it is an absurd amount of data. It's like 300 line <laughs> seeds. <laughs> it's amazing. It's great to work with. All righty, everybody give it up for Kyle and Shelly. And last but not least, if I am not mistaken, Mr. Dunn. It's me. Actually, that's my father. Uh, all right, folks. Are you also sick of websites looking like they're from now instead of from 1998 through year 2000? Personally, every time I look up the weather, I'm like, man, this looks too clean and good. And it has too much information. Presenting Weather 2000, your solution for that very specific problem. Uh, so as you can see from this very modern and not soon to be deprecated marquee, you enter your city and country, and you're going to see the damn weather, bro. So let's check out what's going on here. Um, check out that great rainbow stuff. Just a really nice touch. And we get the dang weather. Um, so you'll also notice this isn't true. Um, it's fake weather, because I will not pay for an API this close to capstones, especially because I might then. So like, what, I'm going to spend $10 to show you all this. So you can be like, oh, the weather's real. Who cares? The, it would work. I could put an API in here and it would be the same. 
Um, so kind of main takeaways on this guy, uh, React hooks and a node backend, hence the uh, relative simplicity. But that's all I got. Um, I can do other ones too, just to prove it. Oh my god. Let's uh, get like Los Angeles, also in the USA. Boom. It has other cities. There's just like a bunch of seeds. That's it. Have you considered adding 8-bit music in the background? You know, um, yes, I really genuinely did consider adding like an, an auto play when you get there. Um, but truly, even for the purposes of my theme, I found that too annoying. All righty. Well, every, does anybody else have any questions? Ben, I think that was great. It honestly takes me two minutes to find the weather on weather.com because there's See? too much shit everywhere. <laughs> Just right to the point. All righty. Everybody give it up for Ben and then give it up for everybody because everybody kicked butt. Ah! Ben has to share his class with other people. All right, uh, good job, gang. So here's what we're gonna do now. I am going to send out the survey, and then we're gonna start stand down and feelings at four o'clock. So uh, that is combined break. I don't care if you do it now. I don't care if you do it shortly before four. But have your shit done by four. We'll be right back here. I'm not closing the room or anything. Uh, you can just mute or whatever. Uh, but I'll see you then.